Blessed be Zion, the pure in heart. Welcome to the lovely Deseret. I am going to actually show you guys my bread recipe using an ancient wheat called einkorn. And I've seen a lot of people lately starting to make their own bread, which is so awesome. And it's definitely a healthier and better alternative um, than buying store-bought. And it's actually it can save you a lot more money too in the long run. But I wanted to show you my recipe because although I send out the recipe to people, they still have a lot of questions and einkorn is one of those types of flour um, that is kind of difficult to learn because it's super super sticky and so and it doesn't rise um, when you bake it like normal flour well the processed flour um so i'm going to show you how i make my bread it's really really easy it's like the simplest bread recipe i've ever had you don't have to knead it you don't have to roll it out or anything like that on your, you don't have to make a big mess on your countertops um, making this bread. So it does take quite a long time to um, rise and you have to let it sit. So it's about from finish to end, it's almost a three hour process. Um, but most of that time is just sitting on my countertop or it's being baked. So let's get started. First of all, you need a large bowl. Um, I have no idea how big this one is. It's really big. So need a large bowl because it is going to rise quite a bit in the bowl. And so we start with two cups of hot water. So this is my hot water. Also, before I even put anything in my bowl, I just took some coconut oil and I, I, I just rubbed it on the inside of the bowl because like I said, this stuff gets super sticky. So that just kind of helps it not stick to the bowl. Now you got, you want to make your water really warm, but not really hot, and not cold. So that's why I added really hot water. And now I'm just going to add some like warm water to it to kind of bring it to the white, right temperature. Don't stress over the temperature of the water too much. Just make sure it's not super hot and kills it so it doesn't kill the yeast. Um, but then you want it warm enough that it activates. So that feels about right to me. fuzz ball in my bowl <laughs> there we go okay so it's perfectly warm i can stick my finger in it. it's not too hot i've added four cups of water to this now so it's four cups of very very lukewish warm water i don't know how else to i don't know the temperature then we're going to add in two cups of your einkorn so i have a big bucket now when it comes to einkorn i know there's a brand name called jovial that you can buy it in the store however i buy mine um, from a lady that lives about an hour away. She grows her own. They have their own wheat field. They harvest it and everything. And then I buy it from her as wheat berries. So it hasn't been ground yet. And then I grind my own wheat and I get this lovely bunch of fresh ground einkorn. So right now we're going to add two cups of the flour to your water. And then you're going to add the rest of your ingredients. So now it's a tablespoon of salt. And I use pink Himalayan salt. So it's crushed. A whole tablespoon of salt. Yes. Pour that in there. And then you're going to do um, active dry yeast. So two tablespoons of active dry yeast. The quality of this video might be very terrible. I'm sorry. And then we have a quarter cup of coconut oil. So I don't use any butter like that. I use coconut oil. I use coconut oil in replace of basically all my fats right now because I can't afford goat butter at the moment. Um, but goat butter is awesome. And then for the sugar that I use in this, I use actually, this is locally, um, this is local honey. So. Um, the higher quality your products, the better your bread's going to turn out. I truly believe that. So, um, I put in about two tablespoons of honey and yes, this all goes on top of the two cups of flour that you put into your water. My honey is so sticky. Holy cow. So there's one tablespoon and then about another tablespoon. And that's just to help the yeast activate the yeast. Kind of shaky because I haven't really eaten yet today and it's 
already after one o'clock. Um, so there, I'm going to wash my fingers because it's really sticky. Now with this, you don't have to do a lot of mixing. You just want to barely give it a little stir. Sometimes I use a whisk. You can just do a quick whisk. Just a little bit. It doesn't have to be all mixed up or anything. You can still have really big chunks in there. And then all I do is I put a towel over it in my nice warm house. And we let it sit for about 10 minutes. Okay, so I got it. It's sitting on my counter under a warm towel. I let it sit for 10 minutes and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, we're ready to check the yeast. So, oh, it's perfect. So it's just nice and I don't even know how to show you. It's bubbly. So it's really um, nice and bubbly and foamy. I guess foamy is a good word to use there. So. It's been sitting about 10 minutes. It's nice, foamy, and bubbly. So what I do is I just um, take my whisk again and I just kind of whisk around the bottom. See if anything settles, I kind of scrape the sides. And that's it, I don't over mix. What's great about iron corn is you don't ever want to over mix, which is cool because then you don't mix a lot. And it can have chunks still left in it and it'll get absorbed into, um, into itself when it bakes, which is really cool. Okay, so now we've added two cups of flour already. We already have two cups in here from when we started. And now we're gonna add five more cups of einkorn. And I use this much. This recipe is really big because it makes three loaves of bread. And I freeze one, I put one in the refrigerator and I have one on my counter. And it lasts our family of five about nine days, depending on how much bread I eat and how much soup we have throughout the week. Because we like a lot of bread with our soup. So now I'm gonna add one cup at a time. Try not to lose count. <laughs> it's easy to lose count. So that's one. And we're just gonna mix it in. Like I said, you don't wanna over mix it. You just wanna get the majority of it mixed into bowl. Okay, so there's one. It's, it's still got a lot of chunks in it. Number two, I'm just going to put this up here. Just kind of mixing it up again, scraping the sides as I go. It's still really chunky. You guys, I'm not a YouTuber chef, so I don't have like the fancy camera settings to put above the bowl and you can see what I'm doing. Um, I couldn't find my camera stand thing. So they're sitting on my countertop. But there's two, we're gonna add a third cup. Sorry if you hear that, that's my reverse osmosis for some reason I had to kick in right now. Okay, so now it's getting a little tougher to stir. It's getting thicker after three cups. Really got to scrape the sides down. And this is why I put coconut oil on the sides inside the bowl because that flour likes to stick. So adding that coconut oil helps me scrape the sides a little bit better, easier. And now I'm kind of going to mix it a little bit more than I did the first two cups. Okay, so we got a good mix. There's three, two more. Oh, makes your arm hurt so bad when you have to stir it. You guys, I've never made this in like a KitchenAid mixer with a paddle or whatever they use. I don't own a KitchenAid. Um, I own a spatula and a bowl. So that's kind of how I mix everything. It's the harder way sometimes, but it's only for a few seconds. Okay, now our last cup. A nice full cup. I'm 
fold that in. Ugh, whoops. That's kind of going everywhere now. It's harder to mix in. Like I said, you don't have to do any heavy mixing. I just make sure I got the bottom scraped and there's none stuck to the bottom. And I make sure there's none stuck to the sides. And it looks really good. It's very, very sticky, guys. See, it's very, very, it should look like that. Like, it should not look like a pile of dough. Whoops, you fell off my counter. <laughs> it, it shouldn't look like a pile of dough, like a big dough bowl, um, ball. You don't want that. So don't keep adding flour. The first mistake I ever did was I was following a recipe of normal bread and I just swapped out einkorn. And I found out I just kept adding flour to it because I'm like, it's not forming a ball. And that was my biggest mistake because then I got the densest loaf of bread ever. And <laughs> it was really hard to eat. So there we go. We got the bread and now it's just a big pile of mush. And all I do from here is because I know it's going to rise a lot and it's only half, it only fills up half my bowl. I'm actually going to take a plate and I'm going to put the top down so that it stays lifted because I know now from experience that it will stick to my towel and that drives me nuts. So I just put a bowl, a plate on the top of it and then I put my towel over the plate. And then again, I'm going to let it sit for about 45 minutes. Okay, so my bread has been sitting here for about 45 minutes. Um, took up the towel. My plate has no einkorn on it, because my towel would. Um, but this is the result. Like it's all the way to the top of the bowl now, whereas before it was just about halfway up. So from this point, um, all we're going to do, <clears throat> now I got these bread pans from a friend. It's funny how you meet people on YouTube and they start sending you bread pans. <laughs> but I love them. These are like really, you can see they're just definitely broken in and they still cook bread really, really well. So my great friend Carly sent them to me and I've been using them. I like them because they're skinny. So the loaves, the slices of bread I get, I feel like it fills the pan really well. So I get a nice, good, thick, tall piece of bread. Um, but I have several of these. I use three of them and will fill all three. Um, if you don't have something that's long and skinny like this, you can use your regular bread pans. I think these are like the nine by sevens or whatever, nine by fours. I don't know what they are, but that's like your basic. And I've used those before. And with this amount of bread that this recipe makes, I have to use two full size ones. And then I use like a half size one. So I've tried to do it in just two full size ones. And I ended up with bread all over the counter. So then I use this little halfy. So I use two full size and a half if you're going to go that route. Um, you can probably use three full size. You'll just get smaller pieces, loaves. You'll get like shorter loaves, if that makes sense. You'll see it when it, it happens. But I'm going to use my three. Now I just put butter. I rubbed butter on the inside of these. I've had so many trials and error with getting the bread not to stick to the pan. And the best thing that I've come up with is butter the insides of the pan really good, like really good and then I lightly coat it with my einkorn flour and it works perfect every time does not stick so it's tried and true for me now I got my spatula and what you can do is you can get it wet and it'll help it not stick so much to your bread your dough so I'm just gonna gently scrape the sides here it's gonna start to sink down into the bowl and I just kind of scrape it around and get ready to pour it into my pans. So it doesn't really stick to your spatula too much if you have water on your spatula. So now I'm just gonna pour as even as I can into these three loaf pans. So there's two. This is the hardest part for me because I can never get them even, but I don't really care. Oh, and the hardest part too is making sure that I'm paying attention to what I'm doing because sometimes I don't and it ends up on the counter instead of the pan. 
but there we go that wasn't so bad it didn't stick too much to the bowl bowl's pretty cleaned out pretty good i think i did good i mean if you really wanted to you could really scrape and scrape and get it all out but this one doesn't have as much my first one always gets the most so i kind of just I divvy them out so they're even and i just flatten them out into the pan like I said, you don't, you can't roll this dough. There's no way you can knead it. You can't roll it. I don't think you roll dough, bread dough, but you can't knead it at all. One's got about the right amount. One's got about the right amount. <clears throat> okay, so they all are kind of even. And I'm just gonna kind of smooth it out a little bit into each pan. You know, so it's not all just in the middle. And like I said, if your first time you do this, it's probably just going to be a little crazy. You're going to be like, what the heck? Especially if you've never worked with dough this sticky. So I just kind of give them a little shake and a pat down. A little shake and a pat down. Okay. So... Now I got my three loaf pans here. You can see they're about halfway full. And now we gotta let it rise again. I know this seems like the longest process ever, but really I let it rise and I go run an errand and I come home and I let it rise again and I go and run an errand if I have to, pick up the kids from school. But now I'm gonna cover it with the towel. Um, you can use a cookie sheet. Like I said, sometimes it'll rise too high and it'll stick to your towel. So now I'm going to take my cookie sheet. There's nothing on it, no butter or anything. I'm just going to place it over the top of the three loaf pans and, of course, put my towel over the top of that. And there we go. We let it sit for about another 30 minutes. So this second rise is 30 minutes, and then we will throw it into the oven. And we're going to bake it when it's ready. We'll take the pan off. They'll be ready to go into the oven. We'll bake it at 3. 50. Now I live in Idaho and it's high, considered high altitude. And so most places like, uh, I think California, uh, Midwest, I don't know. I don't, I have no idea. Um, I think you cook it at 375 for about, a, a, I think it's 40 to 50 minutes. And I cook it here in Idaho for at 350 for about 40 minutes. Okay. So now we're done. I have let this rise for for 30 minutes take my cookie sheet off this is what we got three beautiful pans of dough and i'm just going to put this in the oven at 350 for about 40 30 to 40 minutes i usually just watch it and, and you know check it see when it's done I'm not doughing in the middle. And then that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial of how to use your einkorn and make delicious homemade bread with it. If you have any questions, um, go ahead and post them in the comments below. Otherwise, feel free to share any tips or advice you have as well when baking with einkorn. Um, I also make waffles. Um, what else do we make? Waffles, pancakes, um, desserts, pie, cake. We just made a chocolate cake. And so you can really use einkorn in replace of flour that you are using in all your other recipes. Um, it just takes a little bit of getting used to and practice. So here's to you and I hope that you uh, try it out and let me know what you think. Okay, we have the bread is all done. I've already started cutting um, my loaf because we're going to make avocado toast and soup. So this is the bread when it's all done. It's beautiful, it's soft, and that's about the texture you'll get. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and please post in the comments below if you have any questions or would like to share any recipes you have or ideas on what you do with your einkorn. I know we make a lot of stuff. We make waffles, cake, uh, pancakes. I substitute this flour with all my other regular flours that I used to bake with.